Let's get started on your notes over factoring a quadratic trinomial when the a value is not 1. So again, standard form of a quadratic trinomial looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to be using this method that I'm about to show you when this a value is not 1. So it's a number other than 1. There's multiple ways that you can factor a trinomial when a is not 1, and I think it's a good idea to learn all of them and just choose and go with the one that you like the most. So this is just another option, and it's the grouping method. So I'm going to go through the steps of factoring a trinomial when a is not 1 using the grouping method. And the first thing you're going to do is find factors of a times c that also have a sum of b. So we're going to use this x that I've been talking about, and I put my product here and my sum here, and I find my factors. But then we're going to use those factors right here to split the middle b term into two terms, creating a four-term polynomial. So I've actually heard this called the umbrella method before, and I'm going to split this middle term into those two terms. So I just take my factors, and I put it right here with an x right next to it. So now I have a four-term polynomial, which you've already learned how to factor using the grouping method at this point, and we're going to do the same thing. We factor by grouping. So let's look at this first example right here. 5x squared minus 13x plus 6. Obviously, it is a trinomial when a is not 1 because I have a 5 in front of here. If I didn't have that 5 there, it would just be a basic trinomial. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply a times c, and I get 30. And I'm going to put that in my little graphic organizer right here. I put my product up here, and then I put my sum down here. So now I need two numbers, which you've practiced this a lot, and some of you are probably really fast at doing this, and some of you probably still need to write your factors of 30 that also have a sum of 13. If you don't, awesome. You can just find your factors. If you do, do your, do your little process. That's totally fine. So what two numbers multiply to 30 and also combine or have a sum of negative 13, negative 10, and negative 3? Those are my factors, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 13 and break it out into those two factors, and it doesn't matter which one you write first. So I'm going to write 5x squared minus 10x minus 3x plus 6. So you see how I did that? Minus 10x minus 3x. Those are my factors, and now I've got a four-term polynomial, and then how do I, how do I factor a four-term term polynomial by grouping? I group the first two terms, I group the last two terms, and then I factor out a GCF from each binomial. What's my GCF in this first binomial? 5x. I'm left with x minus 2. What's my GCF in the second binomial? Negative 3. And I'm left with x minus 2. And then I put my GCFs together, and then what's left in the parentheses becomes my other binomial factor. So one factor is... 5x minus 3, and the other one is x minus 2. When I initially learned this several, several years ago, we called this the umbrella method, but it's just factoring by grouping. So let's finish these examples. On number 1, what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply 3 times 4, and I get 12. So I'm finding two numbers that multiply to 12 that have a sum of negative 8. If you want to pause this video and try to figure out those factors, I would suggest doing that now. What are your factors? Your factors are negative 6 and negative 2. So we're going to break out this middle term into those two terms. So I'm going to rewrite my first term, 3x squared, and then negative 6x minus 2x. Those are my factors, right? Negative 6 and negative 2. And then plus 4. I can't forget that last term there. And now I factor by grouping. I group my first two terms and I group my last two terms. Let's factor out a GCF from those first two terms. What is it? It's 3x, and what am I left with? x minus 2. What about the next binomial? What's my GCF between negative 2x and positive 4? It would be 2, but would I factor out a positive 2 or a negative 2? Well, in this case, I would factor out a negative 2 because your goal is to get the same thing in the parentheses. If I factor out a positive 2, I'd be left with negative x plus 2. I want the same thing. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2 so that I'm left with x minus 2. And then let's put our GCFs together, 3x minus 2, 
And then what was left in our binomial factors, right here in the parentheses, x minus 2. And then how could you check your work? You could FOIL it. If I multiply 3x minus 2 times x minus 2, I get 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. Let's go on to number 2. What's my first step? 4 times negative 25. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 100 that have a sum of negative 15. Okay, negative 100 is my product. Tell me about the signs of my factors. One's positive and one's negative because that's what will create a negative product. Well, if my signs are different, am I adding to 15 or am I subtracting to 15? I'm subtracting to 15. So what are my numbers? 20 and 5. 20 times 5 is 100. 20 minus 5 is 15. But what goes where? Which one's positive and which one's negative? If this is negative, the bigger factor is negative. So 20 and 5. And then you can check it. Negative 20 times 5 is negative 100. Negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15. Okay. Let's put our factors here. 4x squared minus 20x. And again, it doesn't matter which goes first plus 5x minus 25. And then we're going to factor by grouping. So let's group the first two terms and the last two terms. And then factor out a GCF from each binomial. So GCF in this first binomial is 4x. What am I left with? x minus 5. And in the second binomial, what's my GCF? Positive 5, and I'm left with x minus 5. Let's put our GCFs together. 4x plus 5. And then what was left over in those parentheses is our second binomial factor. And if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can always pause the video, go back and rewatch it, or you can fast forward. Let's go on to number three. What's my first step? Find factors of AC that have a sum of B. So six times six is 36, and we're gonna add to 37. What are my factors that have a product of 36 and a sum of 37, 36 and one. Next step, umbrella method. Break that middle term into two terms. So rewrite the first one, plus 36x plus one x plus six. Don't forget your first and last terms. Now I have a four term polynomial, so I'm gonna factor by grouping. Group the first two terms and the last two terms. What's my GCF in the first binomial? 6x and I'm left with x plus 6. In the second binomial, well, I have x plus 6, but I need to factor something out, so I'm going to factor out a 1. You can always factor out a 1 or a negative 1. A lot of students forget that you can do that, but you do need something there to factor out. So let's put our GCFs together, 6x plus 1, and then x plus 6. We are rocking and rolling. Let's go on to the next one. So number four, first step, multiply a times c. Two times negative 27 is negative 54. My middle b term, the coefficient is three. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 54 that also have a sum of three. What are my numbers? Nine and negative six. So I'm gonna break that middle term out into two terms and I get two x squared plus nine x minus 6x minus 27. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter if you wrote negative 6x here and 9x there. When you factor it, you'll end up getting the same thing. So this is just how I write it. All right. So I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. And let's factor out a GCF in my first two terms. What is it? There's no numeric GCF. There's only a variable GCF. It's x, and I'm left with 2x plus 9. So in my second binomial, what could I factor out, or could I even factor out anything to get the same exact binomial in the parentheses in the second set? If I factor out a negative 3, I do. I get also get 2x plus 9. So that's how I know to factor out a negative 3. And then I put my GCFs together, x minus 3, and then the remaining factor that's in the parentheses becomes my other factor. 2x plus 9. All right, number 5 and 6, or numbers 5 and 6, are examples where first you need to factor out a GCF. So you always want to look for a GCF first. You always need to factor out a GCF first. I see 
three terms that are all even. I know every single number is at least divisible by two. Is there a number, another number that's perhaps bigger than two that they're also all divisible by? Yes, four. Four is the greatest common factor between 1660 and 100. So I'm gonna factor out a four. When I divide out that four from every single term, I'm left with four x squared plus 15x minus 25. So what's left in the parentheses, that's what I'm going to factor. This GCF right here, it just stays out and we're not gonna worry about it till the very, very end. So now I'm gonna factor this trinomial inside the parentheses that's a, it's a is not one, right? So I have a four right here. So I'm gonna multiply four times negative 25 I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 100 and add to give me positive 15, and those numbers are 20 and negative 5. So, umbrella method, I'm going to split that middle B term into those two factors, or into those two terms. So, 4x squared plus 20x minus 5x minus 25, and then we'll factor this by grouping. So I'm gonna group the first two terms and the last two terms, and I'm gonna factor out a GCF from both. My GCF in the first two terms is 4x, and I'm left with x plus five. What about the next two terms? What can I factor out? Would I factor out a five or a negative five? A negative five to be left with x plus five. So then what would my factors look like? My GCFs become one factor, 4x minus five. What's left in the parentheses becomes the other factor, x plus 5. And then, don't forget your GCF. Bring down your GCF. Don't forget your GCF when you're factoring. It, it stays there. You don't have to worry about it until the end, but make sure you bring it down. All right, let's do number 6, last one. So obviously, I have a quadratic trinomial. Every number is even. Every coefficient is even, so I know I can at least factor out a 2. Is there anything bigger I can factor out? No, so I'm just going to factor out a 2. And I'm left with 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. And we factored out a GCF. And what's inside the parentheses is a trinomial when a is not 1. So I'm going to use this grouping method. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. Negative 2 is my middle term. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 24 that have a sum of negative two. What are those two factors? Negative six and positive four. So let's break out that middle term into two terms. So don't forget my three x squared and then minus six x plus four x minus eight. And now we're gonna factor this by grouping. So I'm gonna group the first two terms and the last two terms and let's factor out a GCF from those first two terms. What is my GCF? It's 3x, and I'm left with x minus 2, and then GCF in the second binomial, positive 4, and I'm left with x minus 2. Awesome. So then what does my answer look like? I put my GCFs together. 3x plus 4. Those become one binomial. And then what was left over in the parentheses? x minus 2. That's my other binomial factor. And then what can I not forget? Don't forget your GCF, bring your GCF down and you get a two right there. Don't forget your GCF. So that concludes your notes over factoring a trinomial when A is not one using the grouping method. I hope it was helpful.